All right, everyone, we have our audience cam being put up right now so you guys can see the space that you will be speaking in. All right, everyone, just to check in, I'm going to be putting in the chat our Facebook Live event link. This means that you can share this webinar with all of your friends and family right now so they can watch you live speak at our Dreamline Hope Rising Spotlight webinar. And we are gonna be starting the program shortly. You'll know when it's began when the video has started introducing the webinar. I'm Todd Bernstein, president of Global Citizen, a nonprofit organization I founded 25 years ago to promote social justice through civic engagement including community volunteering partnerships, promoting early childhood literacy, dialogues on race relations and other educational programs, particularly for young people. Our largest initiative is the annual Greater Philadelphia Martin Luther King Day of Service, a project I helped start back in 1994 with Pennsylvania Senator Harris Wofford and Atlanta Congressman John Lewis. The idea behind the King Day of Service is to celebrate Dr. King's legacy of social activism and justice by turning community concerns into citizen action on, on King Day, but also every day. This is where I met Jeffrey Harlan and Dreamline through our mutual commitment to making the world a better place for all and with young people reaching their highest potential as leaders and change agents. Several years ago, Dreamline joined us with a diverse group of young people in a project creating cloth panels, expressing their values and dreams and their role in creating a better world for all. Two years ago, Dreamline was the signature focus of our annual King Day of Service as young people joined Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney and others creating Dream Booth installations portable three-dimensional displays and creative banners with personal expressions of values and dreams of a world without gun violence. The Dreamline Project is committed to bringing together young people like you from all over the world to express and share your imagination, your uh, voices, um, and express uh, your dreams for a better world, to realize that Although we may be from different backgrounds, races, religions, and places, we have so much in common, and you have the ability to make a difference in the lives of others as individuals and collectively on this day and every day. So I want to acknowledge your commitment to creating change in the world that leads to a better planet for all of us. And I'd like to congratulate Dreamline and turn the program over to Jeffrey, Sarita, and Camille, uh, and all of you, and wish you the best in today's Hope Rising Spotlight and for all the work ahead that you'll be doing. Jeffrey? Thank you. Thank you, Todd, remotely. Um, it is such a pleasure to welcome all of you here today, uh, students in all parts of the world, teachers, youth mentor leaders, all of whom are gathered here on Zoom and with the live audience right here at the Cherry Street Pier for something we've never done before. Let's, uh, yeah, the audience can just wave hello. It is such a privilege to be able to provide a program that engages students to develop their imagination, as you can see in every Dreamline banner, to help them develop their awareness of themselves, what they really care about, what their values are, what your values are, and the world that we live in, to help students create community and connections that we never thought could happen until the pandemic, actually and to help them create paths to change that makes a difference. And our goal is to help students everywhere believe in their dreams. And the reason we know that is so important is that when we as humans have a dream that we believe in, other parts of ourselves, our effort, our resources, 
our devotion line up. And that's how change happens. So it's a real privilege to be able to share your insights as students, teachers, youth mentors with all of you and welcome you, participants on Zoom, um, to this day. And I want to turn things over to Sarita, who's going to talk a little bit about how our program fits into this moment in our culture and our history. Thanks, Sarita. Um, what I've always been really excited about was how the Dreamline banners were al allowed our youth to just really express themselves in a way where they talked about how they felt about what was going on in the world. There's no way that we could have imagined that we would be living in a time with so many uh, things have really just been a space for upheaval in our global community, not just here in the United States. And what I've been really excited about is how in this moment where our students are feeling oppressed, unhappy, feeling like they don't have a voice, feeling like they just uh, don't have a community that supports them, that they're able to find organizations like Dreamline and experiences like using a dream banner to say how they feel and to provide opportunities for them to not only have agency over what they're experiencing, but then to also be able to talk about solutions. Our children have hope in a space where oftentimes you don't think that they even know what's really going on and they believe in what can happen if they work together and I think that we kind of learn a lot from our children so the opportunity for them to write what they're feeling to express it on the dream banners and then be able to have us look at it and really kind of take stock in what they're saying and make and then make sure that they have a space for them to make a difference is extremely important for us um, it's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be able to talk to our students from across the globe about the challenges that they see and how they want to create solutions for change. Everybody, can you hear me okay? Amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess it doesn't need to be said that it's a bit difficult to make connections sometimes. You know, Sarita, Jeffrey, and I, we came to this space to put everything together several times and try it out all different ways of making sure that we wouldn't have this terrible feedback and that everyone would be able to join us at the right time and right space in a safe way and there's a lot to be said about creating spaces <laughs> and once you get to those spaces there's a lot more to be said about it being something that's meaningful and something that is supportive of real connections being made um, i'm grateful to be a part of this program um, at the time that I am, because I get to support Jeffrey and get to support you guys in creating a space in which we can actually do something that is hard enough to do in person, which is be open and be vulnerable and be honest and be supportive of each other about the things that are hard in our lives and the things that we want to change in our lives and the things that we love. Um, so I'm glad that everyone's here today to join one of those spaces once again and to think about the work that we did this summer. And I hate to call it work <laughs> because we, we built relationships and we got to know each other and we got to know ourselves. And that's really powerful. So I'm glad to get to talk to you guys today. Hi guys, my name is Sarita Lewis, and I am so excited to talk to you today. Um, I got the opportunity to, to see your Dreamline banners and to actually hear you speak before I actually got to see your faces. Um, and you, re you really touched me with how you kind of expressed how you felt about things happening in your world. And we have a beautiful audience of people here who I think would also love the opportunity to hear what you're thinking through your own voices. So I'm actually going to ask Grace to put your Dreamline banner up on the screen and ask you to read it for me. So, okay, so whose banner is that, Grace? James, awesome. James, 
Okay. So, James, could you read your Dreamline banner for everybody? Yes. Awesome. Everybody is equal. My biggest dream is that racism would be over forever. No matter what we look like, everybody is the exact same. We are all children to God. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to ask Denton to read his, and then I'm going to ask you guys a few questions if that's okay. Denton, can you see yours? Yes, I can. Awesome. Could you read that for everybody, please? Yes, ma'am. Why would it come? The green piece of paper that is like a snake. When it bites you, read courses through your, through your veins. Thing that puts a wall between the rich and the poor, slithering through the destruction it has caused. It pushes you to live in the streets. Money is not the problem. Three. The thing controlling people's minds. Someday I hope you can look at money and walk away. I, I was just so impressed by the writing that both these young men did. And um, I'd really like to just ask them a few questions about how they came to to really think about what they were writing. And so Denton, since you read last, I'm gonna ask you to speak first. So do you wanna tell us a little bit about how you came up with the subject that you spoke about? Um, I really just thought that some people have a good amount of money that they could use to donate to charity and help out lives that are the less fortunate and but they don't, they just keep it for themselves. Um, when they could, when they have money to spare for, like, food to f donate for a, to a food bank or, like, homeless shelters ask for socks all the time, but they can't just go buy socks because they're selfish, greedy. Wow. Wow. That's really insightful. That's really insightful. Um, I, I feel, so if there was a way that you could see us making a change or if there could be one solution that you would think of, what would you what would you consider a solution that we could have towards the, the issue of greed? I think more the people that can afford to go and buy food or just clothes for a house. Just like think about that. And if you even if you don't donate to get a house for them, at least donate uh, stuff stuff to, to the homeless shelters that could use them to help the homeless people and the less fortunate. Do you think that during the pandemic you've seen people be more generous? Um, I, no, not really. Uh, it's kind of just the same. Not the pandemic didn't really change anything in people's minds to go donate to charity or stuff or something. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, James, I'd love to hear from you as well. You actually spoke about something a bit different. Um, how did you come up with your subject? I just... I... Um, came up with my subject because I saw how unfair a lot of people are treated just because of their skin color. And that's not fair because everyone besides skin tone is the same. And um, I noticed in your artwork that you actually, you, uh, you did kind of show um, words like, um, like George Art. Floyd and I'm actually looking at yours right now. This is so cool. <laughs> um, so you've got George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey on here, and you really talk about racism and everything. It's really, really beautiful. Um, when, you, when you think about the issue of racism and how it is right now, is there anything that you would think that you'd like to see people do differently? I like to see people treat everyone like they are, like they would like to see themselves be treated 
and how they would treat their friends and family. That's awesome. That's awesome. I hope that you guys all can learn something from these young men because quite frankly, they're amazing. They're and amazing. I know with their thoughts and ideas, we can have some change happen in the world. I want to thank you for joining us today, guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you, guys. You did a great job. It's so good to see both of you again. The audience is clapping for you. I hope you can hear it. Um, okay, so the next folks we have joining us are um, Arnoush from Tehran and Jana from Cairo. And Camille is going to talk to them about their Dreamline work. Um, Hello, lovelies. How are you today? Fine, thank you. You're okay? <laughs> you guys um, want to remind us what time it is, where you are? Or Nish, what time is it where you are? Um, it's like 11, four, uh, 11 o'clock at the end. Oh my goodness. And Jana, for you? It's 8.30 p.m. Okay, not so bad. So I think that to start our conversation, um, we're going to do it in a similar way that Sarita did with the boys. Um, uh, Grace, can you go ahead and pull up our banners? And if you guys don't mind, we could read them. Uh, it's mine. Go ahead. Um, my dream is to become a famous and popular singer and perform on the biggest stages in the world and, I'll, and also to continue my studies and become a successful human. Beautiful. So well-rounded. <laughs> Go ahead, Jenna. Okay. Uh, I dream to become a chemist, to make chemistry my major and make a difference in education. I also dream, and I think this dream is about to happen these days, that COVID-19 ends, and I get to see my, my friends normally, as the old days. I also dream that people stop judging each other and bullying each other instead, and instead start accepting each other as we are. One of my biggest dreams is to travel all around the world and to have and to respect, and that people respect nature so that we live in a green space and peace. Beautiful. Thank you. So I have a question. Jana, you're, you have a lot of dreams. <laughs> if you were to grow up and say, I want to be this when I grow up, what would you say? Like a profession or a mind. What, what comes to your mind when you say that? Okay, um, what, came, what, what just came to my mind is that I want to be a teacher, actually. Say that again? Professor. What just came to my mind is that I want to be a teacher. You want to be a teacher? To be a, a professor, yeah. Why do you want to be a professor? First of all, uh, all almost all my family members are teachers, my mom, my aunt. All of them so i grew up in nature which made me love teaching also the way i see students love their teachers and come visit them after 10 5 a lot of years and how they just love them so much never forget their memories with them made me want to be a teacher so that i have these students one day who come to visit me when they get older so that i know they i know their children and they just talk about with their children about me as their teacher in the past. Oh, that's so, really just an amazing way. Do you like to be a role model? Yeah, I hope so. So, Arnoush, for you, I guess if I were to ask you what you want to be when you grow up, would you say you want to be a singer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's your dream. You put it on your banner. So, let me ask you who inspired you to be a singer? Or did you just realize you were extremely talented? <laughs> um, actually, I was inspired by a Korean boy band, but uh, 
I really love music and since I was very little. Yeah. What do you love about music? The way it sounds, the way it feels, the way it brings so people together? What? Um, the sense that it makes in me and I feel it when I um, listen to music, I'm like, I'm in another world. Here's a question. Jana, when you feel like a role model, what do you feel like? What do you say again, sorry? Jana, when you, you say you want to be a teacher and you want to be a role model and yes. you want to have students that come back to you, what does that, what does that feel like? Because I'm wondering if it is anything like what our new feels like with music. Actually, um, I feel very uh, like I don't know if you understand me. I feel very alive. I feel that uh, I'm not going to be forget forgettable. That uh, even after a lot of years, I will leave my marks behind me because. I'm from the people who love to be memorable with everyone they meet, even if we're not close friends. We love to make memories with new people, with a lot of people, even if it's with a small, very, very small word that they will remember me with. So the most time that I feel like that is when talking about teaching and being a role model. That's the thing. I love that. It sounds to me like Jana as a teacher and Armouche as a singer are going to make a lot of people feel alive. So thank you all very much for sharing your voices with us today. And unfortunately, we have to keep moving. But thank you very, very much. truthfulness and directness that Arnush and Jana and James and Denton all share with us is just the tip of the iceberg for what our youth mentor leaders were able to evoke from students during our Hope Rising programs this summer. And we're going to take a little bit of time now to have a little interview with two of them on that experience working with young people through this program this summer. Camille was one of those. And the other who's going to be on with us is <clears throat> Ahmed. Ahmed is a longtime Dreamline supporter and lives in Morocco. And Hi, Ahmed. Hello. Hello, Serena. How are you? I'm doing great. And hey, Camille. <laughs> hey. It's actually pretty cool to have her like about five feet from me. <laughs> what six I love feet. about Dreamline, six feet, six, more than six feet. Uh-oh, hold up. <laughs> Over safe. Much better. Okay, now we're safe. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for all the work that you both do for Dreamline and for like the way that you guys help our youth to really explore how they can change the world through their words, through their goals, through their, their dreams. Um, but I'm so excited interested to hear from both of you about like what that experience was like for you on your side. Um, Ahmed, I didn't have a chance to talk to you very much, so I'd love to hear from you first. And I love the fact that I'm talking to somebody in Morocco. Extra cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think that the whole experience has been quite ex exquisite, especially uh, as I had a group of students from uh, uh, Cairo and they were all brilliant as their dreams weren't only concerned on themselves but really with the issues of the world and they were really solution oriented and had a great ability for conversation and discussions with each other and we got deeper and deeper into these problems but they also always found solutions as to the problems facing the world and they could actually see the actions that they could do themselves in order to make the world a better place. And I think they have been able to express that in their dream banners, which were, I think, really, really beautiful, especially with the artwork. And they were really concerned with the matters of the world that were happening right now, even during the pandemic and during the protests and all that's going on in the world. Wow. So you've been with Dreamline for a while. 
How long have you been working with Dreamline? Well, I, I was a participant since uh, 2013, and then wow. I've been working quite frequently with Jeffrey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, wow. So now that you are on the other side of it, and you're actually teaching people how to do Dreamlines, um, most importantly, they're virtual. How does that felt for you? Do you still feel like there's a connectivity, or do you feel like it really hasn't changed anything at all? I think it's more of the same, and I think it might even be better because it allows us to connect people from all over the world, not just one specific classroom, one specific school where the culture is the same. And I think this is more of the point as Jeff, what Jeffrey does is that he collects dream flags from all over the world. So this makes it kind of easier for him. And also the students get to meet each other and discuss about the same issues, even though they are from different backgrounds and different countries. Awesome. This is so cool. Okay, I wanna actually take a moment to just talk to Camille, who is very far away from me. <laughs> Camille, so what's this experience been like for you? Like what kind of changes have you seen in yourself through working on the Dreamline project? Well, I came to Dreamline at a very interesting time. Um, I joined the team right as COVID started to really change the world. And so I never got the opportunity to work with kids in person through the Dreamline program. I've only ever worked with them through this virtual program. So maybe because I have no idea what the former it's like, maybe that's why I cherish and feel so strongly the connections I do with students that we can connect virtually or we can have virtually. Um, I think that this program is the first thing that I've done that I wanna do for the rest of my life. Wow. Well, what beautiful. I mean by that, yeah, well, what I mean by that is that we help kids understand who they are and we give them the words and the vision for this dream that they have and no one has ever asked me what that is what mine is so I guess as I grew up and went to school and did what I was supposed to do no one asked me so I guess I never really thought about it because there were other things to be done right and then I got to a point in my life where I got to choose what to do. And I realized, I guess I had never really thought about it because I'd never been asked what my dream is. Wow. So then if you could say that there's like one big change that this program has made for you, for yourself, what would that be? It's helped me be sure of who I am because of how, how important it right, how important and right it feels to help someone understand who they are. That is beautiful. That is really beautiful and so powerful and succinct. I wanna thank you both for joining us and sharing about your experiences of working with our children this summer and the experiences that you gained from it. Thank you so much. Hello, Ahmed. It's good to see you again. Hi. How are you? You good? I'm thanks. Excellent. And Nolan. Yeah. How are you? Good. Excellent, excellent. All right, so it's, um, it's a little chilly in here and you guys are both in warm places, so good on you. <laughs> so if you are interested, I'd love to hear about your Dreamland banners. So uh, I read it or explain it uh, as um, I got. So read it and then you can explain it. Okay. I always loved cars. Uh, and drawing. 
But when I was little, I just thought I could work as anything. Then when I grew up a little, I got into a car that had a nice interior. Then I started loving cars. So when I traveled to Germany, I started knowing cars even better. Why don't so? so one day I thought, why don't I work as a car designer? I will get money to do the thing I like to do. That is so awesome. That is actually really awesome. So, so now that you have this idea of becoming a, a car designer, like, did it come from some place? Like, did somebody talk to you about becoming a car designer, or did you just think to yourself, "I love cars, and this is just what I want to do"? Somebody has ever talked to me about cars more than I talk to myself. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, and so I'm going to ask Nolan to actually okay. share a little bit about his Dreamline banner. Nolan, are you ready okay. to read yours? Uh, yes. Awesome. Immigration. You meanie, you split the world apart. You put kids on one side and parents on the other. You meanie, you don't let anybody in, you just kick them all out. You meanie, now kids dream of their parents because they don't get to see them. My dream is for this all to stop so everyone, no matter what you look like, can come to America so we can tie this world together again. Wow. Wow. Where did you... Where did that come from for you? Um, well, my family is like um, a politician family, and like the news is usually on, and I just like started hearing stuff, and I was like, that's not fair, so then I just decided. So does anybody that you know experience issues where people are being really mean to them because they may actually not have the United States as their first country of origin? Um, but, okay, well, that's... Uh, oh, yeah. There's one, my cousin, um, Zainab, um, she like, couldn't come to America, so. Well, I'm really sorry about that. Well, I want to thank you for sharing this. I mean, honestly, the fact that you guys think about so many important things that are happening in the world gives me so much hope about what can happen if we just let you guys take the reins for a while. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Nolan, for sharing your Dreamland banner. And Ahmed, the same to you. Hey May. Hey Josh. Hi. Hey. Okay. Getting myself set here. Cool. So how are you guys doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. How about you? Oh, you know what? It's really cold. Ah! <laughs> it's really cold all of a sudden, so I'm kind of dealing with that. May, remind me, you're in Boston, right? Yeah. So what's the weather like? Um, it's cold, too, over here. Um, it's like fall now, so it's getting chilly. It's like a drop from 80 to 50. Jeez. What about you, Satish? You're not nearly as bundled as I am, so... Maybe it's not so bad. Yeah, so I'm from Iran and the weather is somehow hot here. Like it used to be very hot, but now it's better. But my room is always the coolest place on earth. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, um, because I like to make the place I'm sitting in very cool. Interesting. What about you, May? Do you prefer warm environments or cool environments? Uh, I think cold environment. 
um, uh, because I think it's just, it kind of wakes you up more, and when it's hot, I think it just makes me a lot drowsier. Oh, that's a good point. All right, girls, so let's talk about your banners. Uh, who wants to read their banner first? Does it really matter? It totally doesn't. That's the thing. Meg, want to go ahead? Sure. Gorgeous. Go ahead. I hope someday people wouldn't have to live in the dark, that they wouldn't fear the world. I hope someday people would stop hating or shaming others just because of how they look or feel. I hope someday people would stop blaming things on themselves. I hope someday that greed would stop. I hope someday we would see a new chapter of our lives in happiness and in the light. So beautiful. And so Dayesh, would you go ahead and offer read yours? Okay. So a community can only grow when both men and women are entitled to equal opportunities. I dream of a world where women have equal rights as men to health, education, decision-making, and independence. Gorgeous. I love what you're doing with this arrow. I like how they come together and they move forward together. Um, May, I want to ask you, where where did your dream come from? That's such a vague question, but do you have an answer? Well, my dream came from thinking just about how I know that sometimes kids feel like they're all alone, even when they have everyone around them. And I just thought maybe I can reach out to those people, telling them that they're not alone and there's other people who feel like them. You care about and belonging, it sounds like. And so, what are you doing? Do you, do you have a moment or a feeling or experience that inspired your journey? Um, yeah, so I've been working for, I've been like fighting for women's rights, especially in my community where we don't have much rights. Um, since I was very young, but I really didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know what I wanted. And then when you asked me to think about one dream that I had, um, I decided to make my dream gender equality because it's basically the most for me because I've seen many inequalities and it really makes me feel bad. Can you give me an ex- like, without getting into something terrible, what, what's an Sorry, inequality rate? Sorry, well, I don't know why the sound is like this. It's okay. I'm wondering if you could tell me about a small moment of inequality that bothers you. Okay, for example, um, in my country, um, we are forced to wear hijab and when I see a woman walking next to a man and a woman is uh, like wearing a scarf and she's she's sad about it and the man is free or anything he likes it really bothers me like some women love to wear hijab but some don't so this bothers me and may is there anything around you any experiences or times that didn't feel right to you about about your dream that you could share? Um, um, Some experience that I had in the dream. So my dream, uh, one of the experience was I uh, watched this documentary, um, not really a documentary, a video about uh, being alone. And um, it really, triggered me to like think about what other people were thinking too um what the um video was about was about being alone and how some people even if they're 
are in a room filled with hundreds of people that they know, they can still feel alone and that they're alone in what they're thinking. And that just thought me that just made me think that, well, what if other people feel this too? And how can I help with that? It sounds to me like you both could work together. If May, your dream is to bring people together and Satayash, your dream is to end gender equality, I think that you're gonna need all the help you can get. It sounds to me like you all can work together and create the change you wanna see in the world. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Thank you. by Joy Waldinger, who's from Philadelphia, Mary Pitt from McFarland, also from Philadelphia, uh, Sawa Yunus, who's from Cairo, and uh, Sarah Mendez, uh, Shafley, she's from Dallas, and Marzea Abedi is from Tehran. So, did I say that? Okay, first of all, thank you ladies for taking time out of your day to join us. I hope that I said your names correctly. Just give me a thumbs up. And if I didn't say it right, let me know so that I can repronounce it. Did I do a good job? Yes? Awesome. I want to thank you all for joining us. This has been a really great conversation with our students. And to be able to hear their, their experiences and the reasons why they created the dream banners that they did and why they're so passionate about the things that they're passionate about was great. But you ladies or the were the the engine behind all of this. You really kind of pushed our kids to think broader and to think bigger. How has this experience helped you to kind of experience the world by working through our stu uh, with the students through this project? And we can actually start with, um, actually, uh, you guys can, I can't unmute anybody, but please unmute yourself and then, um, Okay, so Sarah actually unmuted first. So, Sarah. <laughs> um, I would say that for me, it really inside my soul gave me that lift and the most exciting, valuable, meaningful part of my day or my week. So it was something that felt like it had real true purpose. And then to be able to see their raw perspective and then be able to explore it globally was very powerful for me. It made me feel lifted and hopeful and excited to see their thoughts. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Sa Sawa. Yes. You are. Yes, yes. How are you? Yes. How did you feel? Yes. Great. Uh, I'd love for you to answer the same question if you could. Oh, yes. Um, that's our students in Egypt. Uh, in the school that we work in, uh, I'm not only working with them, but we have um, a teamwork, uh, different teachers. I have to thank them all. Uh, Mrs. Dahlia, Moshira, and we have uh, Mrs. Munan, we have Mrs. Rahab. All of them, they are supporting our students to go forward and they're starting their own work. They work hardly because we have more than 100 students. It's only one class. It's more than 100 students working wow. on the projects. Uh, we work on Dreamline project like three years now and uh, supported the keywords for the, our students is a collaborative, collaborate to face a challenge of creating a better world. And this is how that Dreamline programs gave us as a teachers is like a power to raise the awareness for helping students to recognizing the SDG, how to help their communities, how to work in groups. And this is uh, how is that going on that we work. Think big or think about your community, think about your project, think about your dreams. And thank uh, especially, thank you too. 
Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Mary you. Pat, thank you. welcome back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Mary Pat, I am really curious to hear from you. I would love to know what this experience has been like for you working with a global program like this and has it really touched your children in a different way? Like, what are you thinking about it? Oh, absolutely. I think um, what's so nice about it is it's been an, you know, an integral project and exploration during National Poetry Month at our school. So it's had a nice mm -hmm. curriculum tie in meeting curriculum standards, which are really important when you work in an American public school. Um, it aligns with our strategic plan. It dovetails nicely with our strategic plan with creativity social and emotional academic development, being equal, and of course, global awareness, which is essential for all our students. And I think that that pot, what I've seen is the positive energy. We have, yes, we have the strategic plan focus, this curricular focus, this building social and emotional skills, but the connecting and sharing with the students. And really we've been lucky enough in Lorraine to go to the broader community, you know, have a, having poetry slams and displays in our town nearby. and displays in all the lobbies of all the schools and in the administration building, I think that really that connecting and sharing has been essential and really positively impacted the students. Um, um, so we actually have, um, now you, I know you guys can't see her, but um, Marzea uh, Abedi is on the phone and I'd love to actually hear from her. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi, uh, how are you? I'm uh, Marzia Abedi from Tehran, Iran. First of all, I want to say uh, happy International Peace Day to all. Uh, and I want to say that uh, Dreamline Project is like a miracle, uh, especially in this hopeless and disorienting time because uh, uh, it makes uh, students follow their dreams and uh, believe in them. And uh, it makes the students uh, be aware of their, uh, their matters and value. And it makes uh, a local and uh, international communities uh, to know what matters to students and what they want. And I like Dreamline Project because uh, the facilitator of this project is uh, Mr. Jeffrey, that is very impressive person in the world. And um, he supports all uh, young people around the world and wants to make difference in the world. So I have been joined to Dreamline project uh, about five years and I make students to join that. And my students like Dreamline project because they say that they can express their dreams without any shy and they can um, talk about their passions without any concern and uh, by Dreamline project can um, catch their dreams. And I myself want to catch my dreams via Dreamline project. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I also like Joy, I did not forget you. Joy, you said Philly for last. <laughs> okay. so. Joy, what I'm curious about for you is what, what Dreamline banner did you get to see created that really kind of hit you in the most powerful way? Was there any one that struck you more than the others? Um, from today or from the work I've done with from students? In, with the work that you've done with students. I mean, it's, it's hard to decide on um, on just one. I've just, every time I do the project with my students, I'm so blown away by um, how much they're able to go deeper with the um, focusing on their dreams and with um, the, the planning on their projects and, and kind of the discussions we're able to have as a class. Um, I'm just so impressed with this project in particular and being an art teacher in Philadelphia, um, just seeing that it, it really grounds my students and gives them that positivity, that hope, that direction um, in like achieving, you know, like their, their dreams and their, their goals for the future. So I, I really have been impressed in the classroom walking around when you know when I was able to do this in person um, and doing it digitally too is definitely a whole different experience um, but opening up that dialogue that discussion of 
dreams and aspirations. And that's that's my favorite part of this project. And I, I can't just pick just one. I've, I've just been so impressed um, by how much the students give. Um, and this project in, in general, just the creative problem solving, the 21st century skills, um, the social emotional learning that happens, um, these are just incredible experiences that our students get to participate in, in this global fabric um, and being able to connect with students from around the world and see um, Dreamline banners from around the world has been, I think, um, just an amazing layer to this, to know that it's not just you know, Mrs. Joy's art class doing this project. It's, you know, all of these different art classes from around the world or English classes. And um, it's just been incredible to see that progress. Oh, wow. That was awesome. Um, so I am also curious very briefly, ladies, because I know that we're running short on time. And I apologize because it's my fault. <laughs> um, but I really am interested to hear how having this global connectivity has impacted your students. It's like, do they see the world differently when they get to talk to a student who's from, from Iran or who is from Egypt or who is from Tanzania or, or Dallas, Texas or Philadelphia? Anybody can answer that. Mary Pat, why don't you go? Sure, our students have mainly, I think the experience they've had is going to shares at the um, Constitution Center and mainly through online reading poems from all over the world and, and understanding, they absolutely make that connection. Like, oh, I thought that was, well, that was just a problem here. You know, wow, I can really connect to that. And the des I think that, I, that desire to know more about the rest of the world is certainly enhanced. So it, it really connects with them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, well, I know that we have been on here for about an hour. I want to make sure that I thank each and every one of you for the support that you continue to give to the Dreamline Project. Dreamline.org could not do what we do without your help. Thank you for elevating your children's voices and making sure that not only are they thinking these things, but then they are making them a product that the world can see. And uh, really, the value is insurmountable. So thank you, ladies. And I'm excited to see you all again. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff now. Jeffrey uh, just whispered in my ear here in person for me to invite everyone to turn their video back on. I think it's because we're going to take a really awesome photo. <laughs> Best <laughs> screenshot ever. So if everyone could please turn on their video. Oh, so beautiful, all of you. I love it. I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you guys need to see Gorgeous. Is that everybody? Do we have everyone? Everyone? Yes, the lovelies, everyone? OK, so is everyone who's still Wait just for me, because uh, my phone fell down. OK, so I just, put it I just back. wanted to I wanted to see you all so I could thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this time and space to share with connect with us today. And I, I want you to know that if my dream is that you all take an action. We, my dream for you guys is that you take an action in the direction of your dream this week, this month, this year, next year. And I'll talk to you again, okay? Okay, Hi, thank can you. Can you let me, please? Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Just to take a screenshot. Okay. Ah, <laughs> I'm here. Oh, okay. Okay.